Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at some e-waste hard drives. That's right, I acquired these at an e-waste facility a little while back and I thought it'd be interesting today just to go through these and see if there's anything interesting on them. I also found this at that e-waste facility as well, which was interesting because, okay, I didn't find this at the e-waste facility, but yes, this video is sponsored by Linode. I wanna thank them for their continued support of this channel. But yeah, we're just gonna plug these into this USB adapter here. And in the case of these three, uh, plug them into the Dell Latitude D610 and we'll see uh, what's on them. For this fourth drive right here, it actually came out of an Apple computer, perhaps an iMac or a Mac Pro, because this was manufactured in 2007. So we're going to plug this into my uh, mid-2009 MacBook Pro that I've got over here. And that's the other neat thing about these drives is there's about 10 years that separate these two on the right from these two on the left here. Both of these were manufactured in 2007, whereas this one over here was manufactured in 1997. So I'm gonna guess there's probably an install of Windows 95 or maybe it was upgraded to 98, maybe XP, who knows. Uh, unfortunately, this one here does not have a date stamp on it at all, unless there's a date code or something, perhaps this is a date code here, uh, but I was not able to you know determine when this one was manufactured so i think we're going to start with this one just to you know see if we can pinpoint exactly you know at least we'll be able to tell when the thing was last used by the you know date modified stamp on the files on it assuming there's even going to be any readable data all these drives could be dead but at least they're not like this drive over here that i also found at that same e-way site that has some holes drilled through it so we're not going to be able to take a look at anything on here who knows Maybe there'll be some answers to long lost internet mysteries on here, or most likely there's going to be some programs and some personal files that, uh, well, I won't show you on video. But if there's anything archive worthy, like a program on here that is nowhere to be found on the internet, I'll happily uh, make sure to, to make a copy of that. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're all set. Let's go ahead and grab the Seagate drive right here, and we're first going to plug in our IDE uh, connector right here. And then we'll get our Molex connector plugged in there and make sure everything's seated properly. And it's already spinning up. So let's just see if Windows is reading anything right now. We've got the USB end plugged into the computer. I don't really hear any clicking coming from the drive. It's definitely on but it looks like the computer is not recognizing it. Oh, there, it just showed up. I just had to unplug the USB cable and plug it back in. Windows is reporting a 689 megabyte FAT32 partition here. So the newest file on the root of the drive is from Dana.wpd from 10.4 of 2000. Is there a Windows folder? That's what I'm most curious about because if there is we can just boot off of this let's uh see here do we have a windows folder is there really not a windows folder maybe this was an external drive well, let's see what the oldest file on here is july 31st 1995 it's an executable called he it's an ms dos program and yeah there's no you know, information about what it is. But yeah, it doesn't seem like there is a Windows folder. Is there a DOS folder? Let's see. Um, no, there's not a DOS folder either. But yeah, this drive only has 100 megabytes free. So whoever used this most definitely filled it up with a lot of data. It certainly looks like there are some programs, a couple games, uh, maybe more than a couple games. There is Photoshop. I went into this Adobe folder and yeah, I wonder what version of Photoshop this is. Let's see, 1998. This is pre-Creative Suite, definitely. Adobe Photoshop 4.0 and there is some licensing information. I'll have to blur that out. Oh yeah, look at this. So our, <laughs> it's definitely generating the wrong like title bar size here but i don't know do you want to just make a document let's just go to new here and uh, we'll just go with the default settings here there's no email program associated to perform the requested action i didn't want to email anything yeah it's adobe photoshop there you go we'll uh get out of 
that. Ooh, we got an emulation folder. Okay. Nintendo, He, and TNES. I guess, yeah, TNES. I guess this is the emulator here. And it just, it just closed. But I assume this, this is not a shortcut. This is an exe file. Maybe, and it just closes out of it. Although, let's try to run it. Let's try to go to properties here and go to program, or we got to go to compatibility here. Let's run this compatibility mode for Windows 95. Run as an admin. Let's try that. Okay, well, it just closed itself again. Of course, running this under Windows 7 probably is not the best course of action. Toilet Mario? Super Mario Brothers 1 hack? What is this? I'm thinking we should go ahead and hook this drive up to the 98 PC as a secondary hard drive, just so we can actually you know, run this under an operating system that these programs would be expected to be executed under. Well, actually, I almost forgot. The 98 PC is currently running Windows Me from that last video where we installed it. I probably should have done this from the get-go, but I mean, I just was like, hey, I can pull out the Dell Latitude D610 and use this adapter, you know, this uh, SATA slash IDE, because it, it, it does both, actually. In fact, I talked about it in an episode of Garage Sale Finds, and thrift store finds from late 2021 because I found this thing at a thrift store. I think it was like 10 bucks or something. And I'm like, I could totally use this. And I've not really had an opportunity to use it on the channel yet. So I was like, I could just make this that video. And it already looks like the, <laughs> the hard drive is not showing up in here. It is plugged in and it is on right now. But for some reason, it's not uh, showing up. Oh, I'm, you can't do that in Windows Me here, in Windows 9X. Let's go to Properties and Device Manager and just see if it's even showing up in here. It's not even showing up in here. What the heck? Maybe it needs to be restarted. Let's actually just boot into the uh, BIOS and see if it even detects it. Or uh, display system messages, rather. You do that by hitting tab when it's starting up here. Yeah, it shows both. I should probably swap it from secondary slave to secondary master. But, I mean, it does detect it, and we're not trying to boot from it. So, I mean, it shouldn't be a problem. Oh, yeah, there it is. Now it shows up. So, we just need to restart. So, local disk D. Let's see what we've got. So, let's go back into that emulation folder. And let's try to run this exe here. And... Oh, you know what? These are probably MS-DOS applications. Yeah, it just runs and it and it crashes. But we've got, like, this is probably Super Mario Brothers 3.wav. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. It's like a six-second file. Maybe it was, uh, like, an audio capture or something? Looks like we have a snapshot here. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's a snapshot of Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh... It looks like right at the beginning, because this is World 1, yeah, so it was probably like right when the guy started. Man, okay. Zelda 2, so there, there's some save files on here. Zelda.zip, unfortunately we don't have like WinZip or anything. Oh, what is this? This might be the emulator, let's see. Yes, here we go, check this out. Okay, so we were just running the wrong thing. Let's, uh, let's actually go to about here and see what this is. Okay, this is Nesticle Win 95. Copyright 1997, oh my gosh. So, okay, load ROM, and let's, okay, so we gotta get out of the C drive here. Um, go to the D drive, we go to emulation, Nintendo. So I assume these are all the ROMs here. Oh yeah, what is this Toilet Mario? Like, what on earth is this? Okay, so let's see if, uh, gosh, what are the, what are the controls mapped to? I guess you're playing as John. <laughs> okay, so yeah, it just... Oh my god, what the, I've never seen this before. So this is some, like, ROM hack uh, that evidently replaces, like, everything with... Like, I guess that that's the, why the name is John. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, but how do you... Okay, enter is start. Um, okay, so it's arrow keys to move, and then what's, like... What's mapped to A? Let's see if I can view the... Um, settings, okay, resolution, miscellaneous, oh, redefine input, redefine keys, here we go, okay, so, 
Up is up, left, yeah, so it's the arrow keys, and then, okay, control and alt. All right, I'm fine with that. So, and then start is, that's start. So this is, all right, there we go. Now I've got my bearings. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is like... <laughs> I have never seen this ROM hack before. This is quite hilarious. I don't know what compelled somebody to make this, but I mean, okay. I guess whatever floats your boat. Uh, <laughs> this looks so ridiculous. Oh my gosh, the sound it makes. Okay, that's like a fire flower. This is so stupid. Like, come on. Oh man, I ran right into that one. I'm not gonna actually play through this entire thing, but I would like to... Um, I think I already went past the pipe. Or is this the pipe you can go down? No, I already went past that. Oh yeah, I'm like way short on time here. Men... <laughs> it's like you're going into the men's bathroom. Oh my god, this is so like... What compelled somebody to make this? Like, I don't know, man, but whatever. Uh, let's maybe load another ROM here. So let's just, uh, we'll pause it. And let's go to load ROM. And let's see, like, what else we got on here. This is going to be a long video. Gosh, what has it been with long videos lately? It's like every video that I've done has been, or not every video, but I, I always like get started like, oh, this will be kind of a nice little, you know, 30 minute, which I guess 30 minutes is a pretty long video, but we're, we're not even on the second hard drive yet. We got four of these to go through. We're still on the first one. All right, what is, uh, well, let's do Zelda. Why not? So it just looks like standard Legend of Zelda. Yeah. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. You know, I, I've never played through Zelda 1 at all. I was never really a big Zelda guy. I, I was definitely more into Super Mario. But, I mean, I don't mind playing Zelda every once in a while. I mean, I, I've, I've definitely played this before, but it's usually just like the first level or the first couple levels. Yeah, the uh, sound emulation, you can probably tell, is not true to the original. But yeah, so it just looks like normal Zelda. We'll uh, pause that here. You can just hit P to pause, or, well, we can hit start. I guess it's probably too late for that now. All right. So then we'll load ROM. We'll, we'll do one more. Why not? Because I would like to take a look at some other stuff on here. Iron Tank. I don't think I've played this before. Mission orders are to find and destroy the enemy's long-range firing turret. Okay. I have played a game similar to this on the Game Boy. I don't think it was... Maybe it was Iron Tank. It, it was a game very similar to this. You were in a tank and you were going around. I think it was just called Tank, actually, or Tank 3 or something. This this definitely uh, reminds me of that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're probably going to die here. Yeah, I'm not doing too hot here. I mean, I guess I'm doing okay, but my, yeah, my health down there is what I'm going by. Of course, I am just, like, running into everything and just... Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, alright. Epilepsy warning. Uh, gonna have to throw that up in post-production. Um... Yeah, this really reminds me... And I, I know I've mentioned that game before, but I can never remember the, the name of it. I'm pretty sure it's just called Tank. Or Tank 3 or something. For some reason, I want to think Tank 3. Or maybe, maybe it is just this game, but for the- Oh my god! Epilepsy warning again! Ah! Yeah, some of these old games, man. Gosh, uh, yeah, you would not want to play these if you were prone to seizures. Evidently, this guy was a gamer. There is a Sierra folder, and we've got uh, setup.exe. Um, okay, so it's like the Sierra, which, I mean, it already shows it as installed, but what game is this? Tim 2. Don't have enough memory to run this program? We certainly do. It's probably because we just have too much memory and it's thinking we don't have enough. 
And speaking of memory, Linode can offer you all the memory you could ever need. At least until 512 gigabytes of RAM becomes inadequate, but something tells me we're a little ways away from that happening. Linode offers Linux-based virtual machines that you can do practically anything with. As they say, if it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode, starting at just $5 per month. And their one-click app installer makes it incredibly easy if you don't know how to set everything up from the command line. They offer a wide selection of game servers and applications to choose from, ranging from TF2 and Minecraft servers to cloud storage solutions like Nextcloud. You could even set up your own Plex media server if you don't have the hardware to do it at home. And as a thank you for watching this video, Linode is giving everybody watching right now a free $100 credit that you can spend on any of Linode's cloud computing services for 60 days. It's a great way to get started with cloud hosting, and I really appreciate their continued support of videos like this on the channel. So be be sure to check them out and huge thanks again to Linode for making today's episode possible. What it let me let me look this up. I, I don't know what game this is. Tim 2. The Incredible Machine 2. Okay. So it sounds like it's a puzzle game. It was released in 1994, at least according to SierraGamers.com. Napster. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's see if this runs here. Napster Incorporated end user uh, license terms. Don't sue us, please. But, you know, the for the record labels did anyway. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to connect. It's just because, you know, it's it <laughs> is Napster.com is not. Well, it is up because Napster is like a streaming service or I think something like that. Now the name has been repurposed for something else. But yeah, can we just. You must register. Yeah, it's just not going to be able to, to do anything, but oh my gosh. What else? My programs. Calculator.exe. Oh, maybe this is like an application he, this guy was making or something. Let's see if it works. Two times two. Go. Four. I'm guessing this is probably like some, you know, visual basic app. Let's maybe do uh, six minus six, zero. So yeah, it works. Oh yeah, dot VBP Visual Basic Project. That's probably what my programs is. I was thinking my programs is in like programs that he's installed. These are just programs that he's written. And we got a ton of doc files on here. Gabe dot doc. Okay, I have to open this. Well, this is somebody's thesis, and his name is Gabe. I of course was thinking Gabe N, Gabe Newell, and Gabe Two. Alert! Norton Antivirus has detected a virus or other malicious code in a file you are using oh no yeah that's a word 97 macro virus i mean norton antivirus is is detecting it so we're just gonna quarantine it and probably not open any of the doc files on here there was one more this stairway.mid i'm gonna guess this is a stairway to heaven midi let's see yep can't play too much of it i'm sure content e will pick it up anyways even though it's like not exactly the same uh file but i'm guessing this was something this guy was making because you know it's not really long it's 17 seconds long yeah this guy or this girl or whoever owned this uh drive and had it in their computer definitely seemed to be into uh you know a few different things gaming and emulation programming and making midi files at least i'm assuming that's a midi file that they were creating so yeah I think we're going to call it for this first drive and move on to the second one. And you know what? We'll just plug it into the 98 PC right now because we're already here and that other drive is dated 1997. So I'm just going to go ahead and power the 98 PC off and swap the drive and we'll see what's on that other one. Alright, so let's see if anything shows up. Yep, local disk D. Okay, so yeah, we can still browse for some stuff on the drive here. Oh my gosh, yeah, I remember there were some files named Dana or Dana on that other drive. I wonder if this is... There's no... Zach, that's, that's the same guy. That's his name. Oh my god, that's him. Holy crap. I'm definitely going to blur that out just for privacy reasons, but that is a photo created on Tuesday, January 28th, 1997. Oh my gosh. This very well could be the primary drive that goes along with that secondary one. That That is mind-blowing because this was just in a bin. I mean, maybe all these drives were from the same person. Okay, new thesis dot doc. Uh, this drive very, oh yeah, it's already, <laughs> I didn't even try to open it up and Norton Antivirus is already coming up saying 
that it's infected. So yeah, with that same, this is 100%. Um, I mean, unless the virus spread to, I mean, which I don't think it would be able to do that because Norton's catching it. I mean, I'm saying unless it spread to my primary hard drive and now it's spreading to the secondary drive again, this has to be, you know, in that same system where that secondary drive was. I mean, that it has to be. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to wipe these drives. There's no question. There's a lot of personal data on here. But for now, let me just swap over to the Dell Latitude D610 and we'll take a look at one of those SATA drives. So luckily this thing does both IDE and SATA. So we're going to just plug in this uh, short little SATA cable here to uh, that end right there. We're gonna take the Molex power cable and get this adapter here to convert it to a SATA power cable. And we will grab the Hitachi Desk Star uh, from November 2007. So this could very well have a copy of Vista on it. Uh, maybe Windows XP. Maybe it was upgraded to Windows 7. Who knows? But let's go ahead and uh, plug it in here. And we will see what happens. Device forever installed successfully. HP. So this came from an HP computer. And let's just get out of that. And yeah, because it's got that factory image. I had an HP system. I had a couple HP systems, actually. So this definitely brings back some memories for me because I had that same factory image partition on there. So let's open this up and see what we got. Looks like it is a Windows installation. And let's uh, do date modified here. So the newest file is from 2009. Let's see the newest folder, 2010. <laughs> All right, well, that was a complete waste of time. Uh, so let's just look at what's on the drive. Oh my gosh, the HP games. Oh my gosh, Polar Bowler and Polar Golfer. I, I remember these. Oh man, I wonder if we can actually play this. Game is not properly installed yet because you had to go through Wild Tangent, that stupid or whatever it was, where you basically had, you like got like a trial and then you had to pay or something I think I think it might have been a monthly thing even um, let's just see if there's even the main folder in here my HP game console I think this is it yeah failed to open file okay I mean we're able to browse through here oh my gosh I remember playing bejeweled too this just reminded me bejeweled 2 deluxe yeah unfortunately we can't launch any of them because you have to do it through wild tangent and apparently it it says it's not installed uh, and you try to go and this is like HP game console I think is just a rebranded wild tangent or if wild tangent wasn't an, it wasn't I think the thing it was called wild tangent anyways but yeah we can't launch it oh wait a second oh wait okay it launched you had to launch game console wt.exe but it doesn't it's like a thing down here I don't know what what's it's not doing anything it's just it's here in the taskbar, but it's not showing a window. Maybe we'll try to end the process here. Oh no, now it failed to open it, okay. Oh, and then it, okay, so that was just from when we launched it before. You know what, we'll just leave it here. Maybe it'll decide to open up. Oh my gosh, light scribe. <laughs> oh my gosh. My computer had the same program on it, my old HP system. And yeah, I, <laughs> I remember going through and making like labels and stuff for my light scribe DVDs. I, I thought it was the coolest thing and you know, it was very short lived. I should do a video on light scribe that way because I think I still have some. In fact, I know I do. I think in one of my DVD spirals, I have a bunch of blank light scribe discs. Looks like they had the Windows 7 upgrade advisor. I guess, uh, well, you know, it makes sense. They probably had Vista on this drive initially because it was manufactured in 2007. We got Google, do we got Google Toolbar? We do, oh my gosh. I did a whole video on this uh, and then I'm pretty sure Google saw the video and then took Google Toolbar down off their website because it was still up as of, uh, I think it was like late 2021 is when they uh, ended up taking it down and I made that video in early 2021. All right, so I've been browsing in the user folder here and I noticed under my videos, Evidently, this person was a Battlestar Galactica fan because we've got <laughs> some episodes of this on here. And yeah, there's a couple of other things, but there's not, certainly compared to the other two drives, there's not a whole lot. So, I mean, I am still going to make sure to wipe it, but there's not like any games or any like programs on it. 
that would be worth archiving. Oh, there we go. Do you want to use Macintosh HC as a time machine? No. It looks like we've got, okay, so CDs for others, A1. Oh my gosh, what is this? Holy crap. We got some TIFF files. Looks like this was an artist of some kind, line illustrations. There's a bunch of PSDs in here. Yeah, this was definitely a work computer. There's all kinds of files on here. There's like a bunch of brochures and stuff. But yeah, let's look at the application. So you got Office 2008, we've got Utilities, of course, the standard Utilities folder. iWork 06 down here. Adobe Illustrator CS3, so we got Creative Suite 3 on here. I got started with CS5. Oh, we need the legacy Java SE6 runtime. All right, we're not gonna really bother with that. I don't really, I'm not that interested in opening up Adobe Photoshop CS3. Yeah, I got started with CS5, or actually, scratch that. I got started with Photoshop 7, like before Creative Suite was even a thing. I had like an old version of that. Creative Suite was out. I just used this super old version because I had a copy of it that I got from somebody. And uh, yeah, I actually used it to make like my very first YouTube thumbnails when I realized that you could do that or when I first got access to the feature. Um, back in like, oh gosh, it must have been like 2012, yeah. I mean, other than that, th there's a couple other programs here. iWeb, oh my gosh. I never messed around with iWeb at all, but the Computer Clan recently did a video on iWeb, or I don't know how, how recent it was. It was probably within the past couple months. Uh, Ken did a video on iWeb, which was pretty cool if you guys wanna go check that out. I've never messed around with iWeb, so I couldn't really give you a proper tour of this i could just you know use it for the first time in a video you know maybe you guys would want to see that i don't know yeah because i mean i definitely want to do some more mac focused content well speaking of i do have some mac focused content some vintage stuff coming in the near future at least one video uh that i'm really excited about but it's there's a lot of research and stuff that has to go into it so it's why it's been delayed and delayed and delayed because I still got to get videos out because the, the classic dilemma of any YouTuber is, you know, do I do these kind of videos, these unscripted like, hey, here's a cool thing, let's take a look at it to where I can do more of them in a month or do I sit around for a whole month or two months and focus all of my efforts on a bliss level documentary and put that out and have that be the only video for the month. Yeah, that's that's pretty much this video. Uh, I am like, gosh, I've been working all freaking day on this video and this is gonna be a bear to edit, that's for sure. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this one and if you wanna see more like it, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. I really appreciate you guys who uh, who stick around and watch these videos and, and support the channel because without you guys, uh, this channel would, would be nothing. So uh, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you once again for watching. And uh, as always, I will see you in the next video.